What is perception for you? A direct and immediate access to reality? Probably not. This idea can easily be refuted by a case where there is no real object, but the perceiver has an experience, commonly referred to as hallucination. Some believe a hallucination is indistinguishable from veridical perception. Hence, both hallucination and perception may be experiences of the same kind, and since no real object is needed in the case of a hallucination, perception should not depend on real objects as well. So if this is the nature of perception, how can you be sure anything is real? The following four theories rethink perception. The concept of sense data was conceived as a neutral concept to distinguish between what is given in experience and what can be doubted. When someone sees a tomato, they can doubt what they are seeing is a tomato and that what they are seeing is a material object, but they cannot doubt that what they are seeing is a red-colored circular bulgy shape. The red-colored circular bulgy shape is what is given. Sense data theorists say that we are only aware of sense data and that sense data can only be mental objects according to the argument from hallucination. The argument from hallucination states that it is possible to produce identical neural processes that create hallucinations that would be indistinguishable from vertical perception. Whatever explains one must explain the other because they are produced by the same neural processes, therefore perception gives mental objects just a hallucination. The sense datum theory was not accepted wholly by the cognitive science community as some believed that it was metaphysically excessive. But they still believe the phenomenal principle, that whenever an object sensibly appears to have some quality, there is something that actually has that quality. Unlike the sense datum theory, they reject that this instantiation entails the existence of sense data. With a new theory, called the adverbial theory, they believe that the idea of adverbial modification of sensing, the way your sensing changes, rather than the experience of itself changing. To understand this concept, think about a blue square. It can be said that you are visually sensing a blue square, or another way to think of it is that you are visually sensing bluely and squarely simultaneously. The significance of this is that you are modifying the experience without having to know some mysterious sense data. What if perception is a representation of the world? Intentionalists hold that perceptual experiences are representations comprised of phenomenal character and intentional content, and that the first depends on the second. Phenomenal character is what it's like for the subject to undergo the experience, according to Farrell. Intentional content is what the experience is about. It is not generally true that something has to actually be X when there is a representation of something as being X. In this sense, intentionalists can reject the phenomenal principle and delusion becomes a misrepresentation, while hallucination comes only a perce perceptual experience where there is no real object being perceived. Disjunctivism refutes that veridical perception and hallucination are of the same kind. Disjunctivism claims that the indistinguishability is not enough to say that perception and hallucination are of the same kind because dependence of one thing on another does not always mean that the other is constituted by that thing. A may not be able to happen without B, but B may be able to happen without A happening. The argument from silence states that silence is an experience that can happen in three ways, at least two of which are of different kinds. It says that both Hearing silence and hallucinating silence are indistinguishable from being deaf. Being deaf is constitutively different from hearing or hallucinating silence. Therefore, two indistinguishable states can be of a different nature. So hearing and hallucinating silence can be constitutively different. Although these theories differ in many points, they all deal with the idea that both veridical perception and hallucination have a common factor. This common factor permits a person to have hallucinations that are phenomenally just like veridical experiences. A neuroscientist, Steven Grosberg, presents a study to explain how hallucinations may arise from mechanisms inside the neocortex, according to him, that are top-down sensory layers which learn prototypes and create expectations to match incoming bottle-up information coming from the world. In other words, what you perceive is related to what you have already perceived. These top-down create expectations during a mental disorder have the ability to suppress bottom-up information and generate vivid perceptual content from the prototypes previously learned. In this case, what you perceive depends only on previous perceptions. This raises the question, what if we were able to interfere with these neocortical circuits? What's the limit for the human experience? Will it be possible to generate perception virtually in the near future? bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. 
There is no spoon. Then you'll see that it is not the spoon that bends, it is only yourself. 